Alrighty guys, welcome back. I recently purchased a buffer for my shop and this machine took me a while to find and required a significant amount of research in the buying process. So I figured I'd do a quick tool review. Right at the front, it needs to be said that the buffer is hailed as the most dangerous tool in a knife maker's shop. There have been numerous accounts of knife makers being killed when using a buffer by the wheel, grabbing the knife they were working on and slinging it around into their chest. For this reason, some makers have taken the precaution of wearing chain mail and building guards around the buffers. Personally, I only plan on using this machine on handles and fittings, but just be aware that it can be dangerous. This Powertech 8 inch buffer was the cheapest unit I was able to find that had my desired parameters. The first of these parameters was the speed. Many buffers come in at a high 3450 RPMs, however this one comes in at 1750 RPMs, which depending on who you talk to, is the most sufficient speed for knife making and is safer. I found so far that this speed is plenty fast for my application. The other features I was looking for was eight inch buffing wheels and longer shafts, which this machine satisfies. Some other features of this machine include a five eighths of an inch shaft and a one half horsepower motor. It measures 23 inches from end to end and the two mounting holes have a diameter of 0.43 inches. The shafts come out to around five and a half inches from the body of the machine. The base measures nine inches by seven and three quarters of an inch with rubber feet at all four corners. It came with some wheels in the box, which was pretty nice to get me started. There are multiple buffing wheel construction methods, which yield different polishing results. From what I found online, the suggestion is to use loose cotton muslin wheels for buffing handles. If you want slightly more structure in your wheel, you can use a spiral sewn muslin wheel, which is what came with the machine. How far the stitching goes out on the wheel will also determine the stiffness or softness of the feel when buffing and is varied by the manufacturer. Changing wheels is pretty straightforward. On the right shaft, there is a set of flats for your backing wrench, which will allow you to remove the nut on the end. Then your wheel will just slide off. The ability to change out wheels quickly is nice since I use different polishing compounds and wheels when polishing wood versus polishing metal fittings. As a side note, I generally store the wheels wrapped in plastic so that they don't get contaminated with other shop dust and potentially higher grit compounds. While we're flirting with the topic of compounds, I'll note that I've been using two different compounds in my shop. I used a green buffing compound for metal fittings and a white compound for a handle material, both manufactured by Maverick. At this point in the review, I think it may be helpful to go through my standard operating procedure for finishing a handle. I start off by rough shaping my handle on the 2x72 belt grinder with a 60 grit belt and then finish on the grinder with a 120 grit belt. On the hand sanding bench, I start off with 320 grit Rhino wet sandpaper, then step up to 600 grit, 1000 grit, and finally 1200 grit paper. At this point, I head on over to the buffer, I load up the wheel with some white compound and start buffing the handle. On metal fittings, I generally sand them up to either 600 or 1000 grit and then hit them with the green compound on the buffer. So far, these progressions have done a great job for me, but note that I'm new to buffing, so I may make some tweaks to the process in future builds. After watching some of Kyle Royer's videos, I really wanted to try out a Scotch-Brite wheel on my buffer. From what I understand, these wheels were designed for a general polishing and deburring of metal parts and like Scotch-Brite belts, they can speed up the finishing process greatly. In the past, I've used Scotch-Brite belts on my blade bevels before stone washing full tang knives, and I found that they are great for achieving a consistent and smooth finish. The wheels from Scotch-Brite are pretty expensive, so I figured I'd try out one of the knockoff versions on Amazon, which had pretty good reviews. The version I ordered came in 320 grit with a 200 millimeter diameter, a 25 millimeter width, and a 20 millimeter center hole. This hole is obviously too large for the 5 8 of an inch shaft on the buffer. However, at this price point, we can't be too picky. I chucked up a piece of aluminum in my lathe and got to work turning down a bushing. This bushing fit great in the wheel and I'll probably end up making another one since I also ordered a 240 grit version of this wheel. I'm still in the testing phase with these wheels, so make sure to stay tuned to the channel to see my results. So far, it seems like a handy wheel to leave on one side of the buffer since I find myself using it for general deburring in my shop. On the metal finishing side, I've had success bringing up the pieces I'm working with to a hand sanded finish of 600 grit 
and then using this wheel to get a satin finish on the piece. All right, so after all that, it's safe to say that I'm really happy to have a proper buffer in my shop. If you found this video helpful in making your decision, please consider using my affiliate links to these items in the description below. The income generated from these links helps keep the channel going. If you're new here and want to see some cool knife making videos and tool reviews in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.